Hey, Cameron McKenzie here. I want to quickly show you how to fork a GitHub repository. I'm even going to show you how to clone it and maybe even do a pull request as well. If you want to fork and clone a GitHub repository, the first thing you're going to need is an actual GitHub repository. So sign in. You can even register. So I'm going to register as a citizen developer here. And I'm also going to set Jenny to Noble. as the email account holder and put in a favorite password of mine and then verify this account with that spiral galaxy right there. Is that a spiral too? It looks like it is. We did it a couple of times and now I'm going to create this Jenny Noble account, save, maybe even answer a couple of these questions here and then we will move on. Hold on, let this happen. Complete the setup, head over into Jenny's Gmail account right there. There we see the request to verify the email address and it looks like Jenny is now good to go. So good thing. Now, Jenny wants to clone this repository here. There's my repository, Cameron MCNZ over on GitHub. I got the old rock, paper, scissors repository here. There's a performance branch right there that's got some newer stuff in it. Looks like the master branch is a, a little dated there. But Jenny wants to go and clone this repository. So what Jenny would do is she would go and she would look for Cameron MCNZ over here. Maybe even find there's Cameron MCNZ. Look for that rock, paper, scissors repository. And oh my, look at that. A great big link over there that says fork. Looks like it's been forked 200 times and it looks like it's gonna go for 201. So you click that fork button and that's all there is to it. Now that repository has been completely forked. Okay, well, that's great. Now, how do you clone it? Well, right here, you see this green button and it says, here is a URL for cloning that repository. I'm gonna copy that. You can click the little clipboard there if you want. And then you go into a directory somewhere on your local file system. Hopefully you've got Git installed locally. If you don't, this is gonna be very, very difficult. I mean, you might have Git hub desktop or something like that. That's just a, another way of installing Git. I've got Git installed. I can go to the Git bash shell and over here, all I have to do is say Git, clone that repository. Can I paste? And there we go. Pasting works. That's the URL. And notice that's not Cameron MCNZ. That is Citizen Developer. That's Jenny Noble cloning that repository to her local file system. It takes a second or two to clone. And there we go. Now, you, would you want to do a, a git command here? Well, if you did, you'd be foolish. Watch this. You could do git status, and it would say, hey, you're not in a repository. And of course, you're not. Uh, you can see that there's a folder there called rock, paper, scissors. You got to go into that. So cd rock star, the star, just a little wild card there. And now you go git status. And you see, oh, I get it. There was a problem there. I wasn't in the git repository. So now that's all been forked. Life is good. Now, if you fork that repository, what do you want to do? Well, maybe I'll do a little touch alpha.html, git add, git commit, dash m, a good descriptive description of the commit here. So I'll say alpha was added, and that's actually a pretty terrible description. But now I've committed, now I can actually want to send that back up to GitHub, I can just do git push. Origin is the colloquial name for the place you want to go. And then, oh my, I got a little bit of a problem here. And my guess is it's using an existing credential. So let me go in here into credentials manager. I bet you there's something here for GitHub. There's my web credentials. Nothing there, but over on the Windows credential, look at that. There's another GitHub repository that's taking all of my credentials. I'm going to remove that credential there. Now when I try and push again, git push origin, it's going to say, hey, I don't know who you are. Can you sign in with your browser? And I'll say, yeah, that's no problem. It's going to say, who are you? And I'm going to say, hey, I'm the citizen developer. Here's my password. And there we go. We authorize our life away 
Now the authentication seems to be good. We will do this git push origin one more time. Well, actually, it looks like maybe we don't have to. It looks like it was already pushed up there because we did fix our authentication. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I go over here to my citizen developer account, rock, paper, scissors, I'm gonna look over here, look at that, alpha was added. That is pretty awesome. So now I push some code right up to GitHub, and that's code that's all part of the application that was cloned a little bit earlier. You can actually see here, can I do a little ls command? And you can see here all of the different all of the different uh, files that are now local. Those are all the different files that are up on GitHub. You can see game.html and there's game.html right there. Now, what can you do next? Well, maybe you want Cameron to get all of the goodies about this alpha file. So you go and you create a pull request. You say, hey, I got some cool stuff here. I wanna create a pull request. That's gonna say I wanna take my code from citizen developer, push it back to Cameron's repository. So I will click this beautiful green button, create a pull request. I'm gonna lose points there as far as good descriptive <laughs> uh, pull request names go. But now I've said, hey Cameron, you know, I've created some pretty cool code here in that alpha file. Why don't you pull it into your repository? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna log out of Jenny's account there and I'm gonna go over to Cameron's account here. Maybe I can try and log in as Cameron MCNZ. And this is a, a big annoyance that I have where you don't have sign in right on the page, but let me see if I can find Cameron MCNZ there. There it is, looks good. And you can see that I've got four pull requests and one of those pull requests is from Citizen Developer and it looks like the alpha file was added. I'll click on this, take a look at the alpha was added. Everything looks good to me. I'm now gonna merge that, confirm that merge. And now the code that Jenny created on her local file system from her fork that she created a pull request for in my repository is now a part of my repository as well. And there you go, that's cloning, forking, and even a little bit on pull requests. And there you go, that's how easy it is to fork a GitHub repository, clone it, and even do a little pull request. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials over there. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on the YouTube.